Hey guys, welcome back to Next Core. I'm Richard, and today I'm going to be opening up the Trial Deck 2 Toshiki Kai Kagero Trial Deck for uh, V Series, considering, uh, considering, consisting of uh, the Dragonic Overlord uh, variant. I guess that's what you could call it. Where are those scissors from that Blaster Blade video? There they are. All right, we're going to cut this open. I'm going to cut myself here. Cool. Cool. I think I opened it. Yeah, close enough. Alright, slide this boy out. Alright, so I'm gonna go over the whole thing again just in case you haven't seen the other video. Uh, I did do a video on opening the uh, Aichi trial deck, so you guys can check that out as well. So, same thing, going into the first guide, you get the complete introduction to how to play the game and the zones, representations of markers. Um, etc. Uh, steps of battle, all the rules you guys will need to know for stuff later. Uh, I, I'll talk about this again. <laughs> Everything's gonna feel repetitive. The playmat is really cool in my opinion. So on the back, you get the whole thing where it talks about your deck, combos, the important key pieces, uh, etc. Advertising the other trial deck you can pick up and Q4 set. Um, so the main thing I really liked about these new playmats is, yes, as expected, so the trial, the playmats before would always be, the circle was always red, so of course this one is still red, but in the, uh, I'll pull it up right now, the one for the uh, Aichi Sendo trial deck had the playmat with the blue circle, so kind of keeping the color scheme, so now you have a red playmat, red vanguard circle for your Kagero deck, red themed, your red guard circles are now yellow, they used to be green colored, and your Guardian Circle used to be colored with purple, is now colored green, so that's kind of cool, in my opinion, that the yellow and the green kind of match with the color scheme they use in the anime, and the red kind of matches with the whole, like, persona character uh, color scheme. So that's pretty cool, in my opinion, the fact that they made the playmats that way. Uh, other cool thing is the fact that these trial decks now kind of snap open, when you open them, you just gotta fold it up. I don't know if that's always been a thing, but I feel like this is new, so I'm really excited for that. So here we already got it. This, the first thing you see is of course the foiled version of Draconic Overlord. Oh, I, oh, I could slide this one off. I couldn't slide the other one off. Okay, so these slide off, in case you watched the other video. Uh, so starting off, we have four copies of Draconic Overlord. So. One copy, of course, being the one copy Triple R foiled, uh, another being Alt Art foiled, really nice foiling there, and the other two just being common. So already you get your four copies of Dragonic Overlord. These seem to be pretty stable for upcoming Kagero's deck, Kagero decks. Uh, you're probably gonna be running four copies no matter what Kagero deck you're gonna be playing. Uh, really good in premium, considering the fact that it's Overlord, and Overlord has a lot of great uh, G support that I was left with. Uh, also, considering it has the original Overlord name, it can serve as for Cross Ride, for Dragonic Overlord at the end, gives you a Force Gift, has a pretty decent effect, and can be used as a rear guard beat stick for that extra 10k power. Honestly, this card is going to be really good considering if you want to play Kagero, definitely pick up this trial deck because you're just going to be able to get right into the deck from the get go. So, highly recommend you pick up this if you're really interested in Kagero. Yeah. So, Art on this is really nice. I like this. It's kind of similar to the old uh, Overlord art, except the background was white instead of black. Uh, this one's also still really nice. It's kind of still got the blazing, flaming, fiery dragon theme going on there. So you get playsets, playset of this card. Uh, moving on, we got four copies of Crested Dragon. So Crested Dragon is similar to Star Drive Dragon. Uh, Crested Dragon skills when it attacks the Vanguard. Uh, Rearguard Circle, uh, based on the number, if your opponent's rearguards are three or less, it gains 5k. So it has a rearguard skill, also has a force gift, so if you cannot ride Overlord, you can still ride this and gain your force gift, essentially not trying to minus you for misriding. So appreciate the fact that Bushu was nice enough to give us a play set of eight grade threes that all gave you force gifts. Really nice. So next up, uh, the other child deck, same thing, kind of spooked me. The rest of the foils of other copies are going to be in the back. So, there's a place to this, place to this, so I'm going to pull them off right now. So we have four copies of 
Dragon Armored Knight. So you get one copy of Dragon Armored Knight that's foiled, which is pretty cool. Uh, I feel like this is also pretty cool considering the fact that a lot of people are going to be running Dragon Armored Knight. Uh, you do have the option of running other grade twos. There's, I know there's a grade two, I forgot the name of it, but it's the one where you counterblast and you move it to the soul to retire an opponent's graveyard. Uh, personally, I wouldn't run that card. I would rather run this, uh, being that this gains more power rather than doing board control since Nahalem does that enough for you. Babar and Nahalem do that enough for you. Uh, the skill is of this card is when this attacks, if your opponent has three or less rear ghosts, gains 5k. Uh, in the Blaster Blade video, I talked, or the Aichi Sendo trial deck video, technically, uh, I talked about the importance of these cards that are 10k and gain 5k because you put an 8k booster behind them and the column will then swing for 23k. The importance of this is because your opponent's Vanguard grade 3 will be at 13k base. If they get a damage trigger, they'll be at 23. So being able to match that number with the 23k column with the 8k boost is uh, could be significant. Also, if you get triggers, it'll be a 33k column. So these numbers are going to be what we call magic numbers, which force your opponent to have throw down extra guard compared to having like uh, a skill that's just retiring. But if depending on your play style or however you want to play your deck, you can do that too. Uh, personal preference, I would prefer to run Dragon Armor Knight. Some people might also prefer to run 10k Vanillas for the extra shield. It's up to you. Uh, I really like this card. I love the art of the card. Really nice, decent skill, comes foiled. I'd run it. So you get full, full playset of that just by buying this card. You're already, you're already good to go. Got your playset. Next up, one of my favorite cards in this whole game is Dragon Knight Mahalan. It's come back to us. Still with that 10k base, that's all that matters. So he doesn't come foiled, he's all commoned out, but it's okay, he's still he's still around. Uh, Dragon Knight Helm's skill is that when he's placed uh, on rearguard circle, you can counterblast one and choose one of your opponent's rearguards in, in the back row, so you can just choose, it doesn't have to be the same column, uh, bar is the same column. You just call it and you choose one of your opponent's cards in the back row, and they retire it, and Nahalem gains 5k. So Helm does gain power too, so same thing as I talked before about being able to swing for those numbers. Uh, it is on place, but it can still act as like a Menace Laser, or a cheaper Berserk Lord. Basically what Kagura has always been doing. So Nahalem, uh, you should for sure run four copies of Nahalem. Super cheap cost, you just play it, count plus one, retire a back row unit. Back row units are pretty important, uh, especially because you can't swing at them. So being able to snipe units is always really important in this game. Nahalem's a good card run it and then next of course we have um three copies of embodiment of shield lom so in the ig trial deck you would get we got four copies of this uh grade two so i feel like the reason that they didn't really give it to the kagero deck was just considering that um you're probably not going to need it as much nahalem and uh dragon overnight are pretty important uh, Lom kind of just serves as a shield fodder, a ride target to keep the 10k base. It kind of doesn't really do as much. Also, just because product placement, Galatina is a really important card in like, you know, Aichi's history as a character throughout the show, so they gave us four copies of it. Um, really interesting, they wouldn't give us four copies of Jaren in the Blaster deck, uh, considering how it's just as important as Dragon Armor Knight. But at the same time, you know, well, it's 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 okay. If you really need to get an extra copy, get a common off TCG player, pay 50 or 90 cents, and it's okay. So, 10k vanilla, choose to run it if you want. It's up to you. So, oh, other thing I'll just mention: 10k vanillas they have the uh, 10,000 power shield now, whereas the other grade twos uh, only with skills only have 5,000. So if you want to choose to run 10k vanillas to have the extra shield, that's an option for you as well. Moving on to the grade ones. We have uh, four copies of our perfect guard, which is Guard Griffin. Uh, this is really funny considering Guard Griffin is an old card, which should just be like when you place it, you had to like counterblast one to gain 5k shield. So it used to be a defensive card back in the day too. So 7k base, uh, perfect guard skill. When this is placed in guard circle, discard one, choose one of your units that cannot be hit in the, in the battle. Of course, as you may or may not know, uh, this will be pay, replaced by Wyvern Guard Bree. The draw trigger, they'll be coming in 
V, BTL1, Unite, Q4. So, but still nice. Uh, well, I still want to say that it's really nice that Bushiroad is being able to give players who are starting the game access to perfect guards immediately just by buying a trial deck. Where, you know, I come from a time back in my day, uh, players would have to kind of. Well, perfect guards were essentially a luxury. You, if you had and could afford to buy perfect guards or throw them in your deck, uh, you could. Um, as the game kind of power creeped its way to G era, uh, perfect guards became necessities, so they started including them in trial decks at two copies, meaning you had to buy uh, two trial decks to get your full playset. Uh, nice that we can now have our full playset in trial decks and not having to buy legend decks or two copies of trial decks. Uh, next for grade ones, we have four, sorry, try this again, three copies of Dragon Monk Gojo. So Dragon Monk Gojo's skill is that when it boosts, if you have more rear guards than your opponent, this gets 3k. So this is nice for having like uh, early game, you want to boost your 10k rear guard 21k base against your opponent's 10k base. Um, pretty decent. Uh, as far as the numbers work, um, the only way that this would actually hit to make like a magic number, this would have to be boosting at 12k to make the column 23, if I'm doing math right. Um, it's it's really up to about uh, how you want to place this card. But uh, its main purpose seems to be that it's early game, it's also an 8k base, 10k shield. All the grade ones in this game now have 10k shield. Um, it, it's going to be replaced, essentially. Uh, Aramo is going to be a great card in the next set. It's a triple R, which is going to be harder for players to get. So uh, keep an eye out for Aramo. Definitely should be running play sets of those. So Dragon Monk Gojo, everyone. And next up, we've got four copies. We've got the foil copy that was in the back. Four copies of uh, Embodiment of Armored Bar. So Bar is back again. He still has the 8k base. Uh, Bar's skill is that when it's placed, you counter blast one and soul blast one, and you choose your opponent's grade two or less in the same column as this unit and retire it. So it's Menace Laser uh, has to be grade two or less and in the same, so and you have to pay a soul blast extra. And then afterwards, if you have more rear guards than your opponent, uh, this gets 5k. So I will answer a very basic question that I feel like someone will ask one day. If I play bar, and then after the retire, we have the same number of rear guards, and then I play another bar, and then all of a sudden I have more rear guards, do they both gain the 5k? The answer is no. The second one would because it gained the power this continuing the skill. After you resolve this skill, because you had the same number of rear guards, it does not gain the power. I don't know why I felt like I had to say that, but I just had a feeling someone was going to ask. So yeah, Bar's a good card. You should definitely run it in your um, eventual meta Kagura deck that you plan on building. So this is a really great deck for people that want to uh, sorry, that's from the IG deck. <laughs> kind of slipped in there. Um, people that want to play a dragon-themed deck and want to start playing this game, this is a great deck to invest into. Even if you don't plan on updating it seriously or spending money on really expensive cards, this is still a pretty decent deck to play around with. Last but not least, we got three copies of uh, 6k grade 1 cards. Uh, 6k, 6k base grade 1 cards are not ideal for um, decks. If you really want to plan on updating its deck, uh, first thing you probably want to look into is replacing these cards. The skill is not terrible though. It's um, if your opponent has four or more rear guards, you count blast one and you put this in your soul, uh, and you choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it, and then one of your rear guards in the game's 10k. So this is essentially uh, trying to thin out the field. It costs a counter blast, which kind of sucks since there's not real much of a counter charge engine. Gives a unit 10k, so this is uh, important because because you are playing an Overlord deck, the theme of the deck is to have a powerful Vanguard that swings for a really high number, and after it hits, um, you want it you want to be able to use the restand skill because most of the time when you're playing Overlord, you swing, it hits, your opponent gets a defensive trigger, and then be, paying the cost to restand doesn't seem warranted enough, especially if your opponent can is able to guard the second attack. Um, so 
uh, this card will be able to help you make that play a lot easier. So that seems to be what the card uh, card's intent is. The other thing that this thing does is it can power rear guards as well if you want to push for game. So decent card, but will be replaced eventually. Okay, new starter is Lizard Runner Undu. So same as the old Kai uh, trial deck starter. When wrote upon, draw. Goodbye, four runners. So Tar is back, embodiment of spear Tar. Uh, <laughs> you could use this with the alley thing with the new bar. <laughs> no one's gonna do that, but this is the fact that it exists. Uh, triggers now gain 10,000 power. Um, triggers uh, also have 15 or five to five, 15, and 20 shield. For this is just five and 10. So that's really cool. So we got four copies of Tar for crits. And then we also have four copies of Raksha. So Raksha was the Kagura crit that came in the original trial deck. Uh, this one, however, is a vanilla. The art's really cool. I like that art a lot. So same thing as Tar, cool art. Oh, uh, just personal preference. If uh, you if you want to, to choose your trigger lineup and you're not running eight crits, uh, if you choose to run more uh, Tars than Raksha, uh, I will judge you because scalies. I'm joking, please please don't quote me on that. Uh, four copies of Red Gem Car Carbuncle. So uh, interesting they didn't choose to do Dragon Dance or Monica, but you know, I like a little change up. You know, uh, Red Gem Char, Red Gem Charbuncle. Uh, Red Gem Carbuncle used to be Draw Trigger Vanilla as well, so uh, Cool addition. Gains, gives 10k power, only has 5k shield, so the draw trigger still kept that consistency. Yeah. So really cool is that the trial deck will also give you 8 crits and 4 draws versus doing the uh, rainbows of 4 stand, 4 draw, 4 crit, 4 heal. So now players don't have to go out of their way and try and get rid of their stands. They're already given the 8 crits that they wanted to begin with. Last but not least, uh, Dragon Monk Genjo for the main deck. So. Bringing back an oldie, honestly don't think there could have been another replacement for this. Gojo, Genjo is just the uh, the aesthetic of the heel trigger. Really nice looking art. Um, uh, heel triggers also now give 20 shield. So uh, still kind of feels like you're playing G Guardians where you get that extra shield bonus. Make sure you're grade three Vanguard uh, at a 33K base total. Um, Please do not run, choose to run heal triggers with skills over these new heal triggers simply because of this being that extra 5,000 power you're going to get from triggering this card. So both defensively and offensively, you want to be able to take advantage of these triggers as much as possible. Uh, and I 100% believe that being able to do your bind to and counter charge or soul charge uh, really does not warrant losing that extra 5k that you could be getting by playing this card, so. And you can still use it to pay the cost for G Guardians, so in the end, just run run these kill triggers, please. All right, lastly, for, we got our deck comes with three uh, Force Gifts, so you get two Force Gifts that say, when acquired, you put this on a van or rear, and the unit on that circle gets 10,000 during your turn. Uh, and then the final copy of your three copies of Force Gifts is one of Dragonic Overlord, same effect, uh, but you got a cool looking Overlord gift, which is pretty neat looking. So now this is available if you want to fill up your whole gift slot with a bunch of these. Um, there's a Aichi Sen, uh, not Aichi Sen, there's a Blaster Blade one as well, so you can kind of mix and match. Uh, future decks will, of course, will might uh, have more units with on gifts. I know that there's the one with the uh, characters from the show on them as well. So. Gifts can either be plain and vanilla, or you can make them, you know, spicy. That's basically it for this uh, this video. Let me know what you guys thought about this deck. Uh, let me know if you're looking forward to standard format, and um, if you're excited to build your Kagero deck. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I'm Richard, and I'll see you all next time.